You just tuned in to the Tiger Toledo Show. Remember that shit I gave you last week, nigga? It's nothing, nigga. It's nothing. It's nothing, nigga. Nigga, it's nothing. This shit right here, nigga. Peace, peace, peace. This is your international sales and marketing hitman, your humble hip-hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rock with the best you heard. You know, I was thinking about uh, a couple of things, man. You know, just... Just just stories that that I've gone through in my life, man. It's, it's, it's so interesting, man. And, and I think like a lot of people enjoy my stories because they're so uncut and raw. You know what I mean? Like maybe to paint some pictures because your boy's an artiste, right? You know, like I draw. I like colors. I know shapes. So I can I can illustrate a very vivid picture in the stories that I tell. (sighs) You know, um, and I I try to try to tie everything in with business because I think business and life are like just merged together, right? I remember when I first found out my brother was addicted to crack cocaine. It was a it was a hard pill to swallow, man. <clears throat> I was out on the stoop, you know, born and raised in Brooklyn. So let me let me paint the landscape for you. Brooklyn, New York. I want to say mid eighties, right? Mid eighties. Summertime, door knocker earrings on the on the girls. It was about, you know, maybe around 6 p.m. Warm. Beautiful night. Everybody's on the stoop chilling. Cracking jokes. You know, what I mean, uh, my boy, my boy, Jeff and Marlon was playing a little, uh, you know, two hand touch football on the sidewalk and one of my good buddies mush who lived downstairs in my building 1381-9 sterling place between utica and schenectady you could google that it's the infamous building that your boy grew up in so you could have a real good visual of what that building looks like and uh I remember my boy Mush was like, yo, because his brother was addicted to crack cocaine as well. He was like, yo, uh, nigga seen your brother on the roof. And whenever a person would say on the roof, you pretty much knew what that meant. Right. So I was like, word. He's on the roof, huh? And it was a hard pill to swallow because that, that's my older brother, 12 years, my senior. I looked up to him. And I, I still kind of look up to him um, as a hero because he was the black sheep of the family. Great business mind. And it, isn't it crazy? It's always like... The really, really talented cats that choose to just go wayward and, you know, do their thing, man. But I started noticing signs. And anybody that had a family member that was addicted to that type of drug, crack cocaine, you guys, I feel your pain. Even if you've been through it, you... You become a different person on that drug. Um, Started getting into arguments with my mom. He had this really, really clever trick. I mean, this shit worked like clockwork, right? It took us a while to catch on to it, but we caught on to it. So this is what he would do, right? Because he was a functional drug addict, meaning that he would have a job. He would always have a job. 
or he would have his own business where his business was doing well. And uh, this is what he would do, right? When he had a job, he would come to my mom on Friday when he got paid and he would give my mom, like he would go cash his checks and then give my mom the money, right? And he'll keep like maybe just 50 to a hundred dollars in his pocket. He'd be like, look, mom, this for you to pay some bills and, you know, help out the household and this and that. Right. So my mom was like, oh, okay. Now mind you, my mom didn't know at the time. Right. She was like, okay, yeah. All right. I'll hold on to the money for you. And he's like, and he's like, yeah, you know, if I ever need some, just I'll, I'll come in, you know, ask you for it. So she, he was basically, using my mom as a ATM bank before there was ATMs, right? So my mom was like, all right, yeah, no problem, son. I'll do that for you. He would go out and get his drugs. Now, crack cocaine doesn't last long. You smoke it, that shit is gone, then you want the next fix. So later on that night, he would come back and ask my mom for maybe another hundred dollars out of the money that he gave her. Let's just say he gave 500, right? Boom, he gets the $500. I mean, he gets $100, he go back in the streets, party it up, right? Come back, get another $200. So my mom is like, yo, this is like, come on, man. Like, soon you ain't gonna have nothing. He never planned on leaving her with money. This is this was his plan. So he went out, got another two hundred dollars for my mom out of his own money. Right. And then, boom, he would go ahead and have another crack cocaine party with whoever else that he was doing these debacles with. Then he would come back for the remainder of his check. And they go back out and I'm talking about all of this is happening happening in a few hours. That's how strong his addiction was to that drug. That drug had a hold on him. Now his money is depleted. He has no more money with my mom. Now he comes back and he was like, hey, mom, I'm going to need to borrow like $100 from you. He was like, when I get paid, this was this was the spiel. This was the spiel. This is why I say influence and persuasion is you that skill can be dangerous in the wrong hands. Absolutely dangerous. You put persuasion and influence in the hands of a gang leader, he'll get people killed. You put influence and persuasion in the hands of a crooked politician, he will commit crimes of untold magnitude. You put influence and persuasion in the wrong dictator of a country and he will annihilate people, a whole civilization of people. That's how powerful influence and persuasion is, i.e., Hitler, i.e. Bernie Madoff, i.e. gang leaders, okay? So he goes back to my mom and says, hey, I want to borrow $100. 
when I get paid, which you know I'm going to get paid, you already seen the money, right? He used the check as social proof. Do you guys see the correlation? He used his check that he had with my mom, that he gave her the money to hold for him, as proof that he has income right now. He just needs a little more. And then what he would follow up with is that I'll double it. I'll double what I borrowed from you when I get paid on Friday. So to a person that doesn't know that the person is addicted to a drug or whatever, that sounds like a sweet deal, right? If I give you a hundred, you'll give me $200 back by Friday in a week's time. Wow. That's, that's a pretty good deal. Not that my mom's trying to take advantage of her son, but he laid that option out for him. She was like, okay, well, yeah, I can do some stuff with that. I can provide for the household because my mom worked tirelessly. She's an immigrant from Haiti. So her work ethic was was sick. I ain't never seen no work ethic like that. That's why I do what I do. But this time I just take her work ethic. I apply it to technology in order for me to scale. She didn't understand what scale was back then. That word wasn't even in the lexicon. So my mom takes $100 out of her personal pocket now. And then gives it to him. He goes and takes that hundred dollars. And has another drug party. Well, guess what happened? The drug runs out and he gets that urge for more drugs. So he comes back to the house. And now he tries to squeeze even more money out of my mom. Let me get another 25. Let me get now the, the, the amount of money that he's asking is no longer really high anymore because he's realizing that he doesn't want to pay that much money back. And it may, it may put him in a bad position. So now he's asking for $50, an extra $25. And this is where you see crackheads out in the streets asking for $10, $5, and they try to uh, get more drugs with coins and, and selling VCRs and shit. I lived through that. My brother stole my VCR. Yeah. And then blamed one of my friends for doing it. But when I look back at the tactics that he used, now that I'm older, he used a tactic of let me play into the need of a person, which happened to be his mom. We weren't making a lot of money. We lived in the hood, right? Right. He said, hey, look, I got a job. I'm making X amount of money. Let me give you this money, which I plan to take all of it out back from you within a matter of hours. But because you got to see this money and you got to touch it, it is more than enough for me to get into your money. It's enough proof for me to tap into your money. Where have you seen this before? You've seen this when you try to live vicariously through a celebrity. You see them with a Maybach. You see them with uh, a Rolex watch. You see some of these influencers show you their Lamborghini, private jets. And their money and their success builds a trust factor 
that you say, you know what, this person, this person only wants $97 from me. Look, they got a, they got a Lamborghini. Maybe it's theirs, maybe it's rented. I don't know. Maybe it's their homie's uh, Porsche. I don't know. But it's enough to convince a person that doesn't have a Porsche, that doesn't have a Lamborghini, that doesn't have the $500 extra that my my brother gave to my mom to hold it looks alluring it looks very appealing it looks sexy so now you want what that person has and you're willing to come out of your pocket for it if you guys haven't had a chance to look at that Netflix special with Bernie Madoff look at that that biopic documentary will show you the power of influence and persuasion. He'll it'll even teach you about scarcity and exclusivity. Because those are other power elements, power pellets that you can use to influence people and persuade people. A lot of times when I write my books, I ask people to take an oath, right? Like, do not use these skills that I'm going to teach you for bad. Use it for good. Use it for good. Use it to serve and enrich people's lives, not to tear down, not to destroy People lies because I've seen people use these skills and it has it has annihilated families. People have died because of other people's influence. People have gone to prison because of other people's influence and persuasion. I've seen girls do things that they would have never done that came from good, wholesome homes. And they were persuaded and influenced by men to do some of the most ratchet shit in the streets that you you wouldn't even believe. So the stuff that I'm teaching you guys on the Tiger Toledo show, please use this to uplift the community. Use this to enrich people's lives. I don't care what nationality, culture you're from. A hurt person is a hurt person. I hope you guys got value out of that. Just want to let you guys know the Start From Scratch course is now open. Go to TigerToledo.com. You can see all of the amazing resources, free bonuses, and all kind of stuff that I have for you guys. Until then, I wish you guys the best. Peace.